Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So the video today, it's on a BMW, it's on a 2009 BMW 320i, so the 2 liter petrol engine. And um, before uh, I get another comment like I had oh, some time ago, uh, someone says for me to take my dirty hands from the customer cars. I just want to show you because it's going to show probably at some point throughout the video that this is how I get the cars, okay? And the rear seats, the rear is the same. So this is how I get the car. So this was not me, guys. I'm usually, I'm always very careful, but this is how I get them. Anyway, so the problem with the car and while we are waiting for parts for the little C3 and for the Picasso, we're gonna work on this one. So the problem with this car is the following, and I'm gonna, um, I will try to show you that as well. The battery is charging at the moment because it was completely discharged. But the issue with the car is the following. So when you start the engine, the engine starts. Uh, it runs really, really rough, uh, as if it's misfiring. It might be that it's misfiring. I don't know yet. Uh, the car was just dropped here yesterday on a recovery track, um, and every time you engage gear. Uh, and you press the accelerator, the car doesn't rev, it starts to shake everywhere and it shuts down. So that has no power at all, it runs really rough and uh, and that's the problem with the car. Uh, it starts fine or it starts every time. I've been told yesterday when we were moving the car from outside to here, um, I, I was trying to aid the pushing the car with the gearbox, obviously it's just engaged, and it was shutting down all the time, but you would start fine. So anyway, uh, let's the, the, the battery to charge a little bit more. I will start the car and I will show you exactly what the problem is. Hey right, guys, so let me quick show you uh, what the car does. So the car starts. Okay, so there it is. It runs really lampy. Oh crap. Okay, I couldn't show you this time, let me try again. Okay, so that's why it does, and when it's running, uh, the throttle does not respond at all. Let me show you, see if it starts again. As you can see, look, see, does not respond at all. So, um, um, I will be plugging in the, I will be plugging in the, the charger again. And let's gonna scan the car because right now it is what it does as you have seen it runs for a few seconds it shuts off and uh, there's no response from the throttle pedal and at the moment I have no clue what's wrong so uh, let's go okay guys and let's gonna see what's wrong with this so Oh dear, is there any more? Bloody hell. Okay, um, EGR, uh, absent, absent, present, throttle valve, present, throttle valve, position to uh, throttle valve, adaptation value, throttle valve, uh, throttle pedal. Okay. So, actually, it's not too much. Actually, it's not that bad. Everything is pointed to the throttle body and my um, accelerator, my throttle pedal. So, the first thing I'm going to do, let's gonna inspect that uh, throttle body. Okay, guys, so the first thing I've done was, someone was there before, brackets were loose, everything was uh, and then bolt and stuff. Uh, so, the first thing I've done, you might, I'll show you in a second, was remove the throttle body completely and start the engine. So the engine obviously runs lumpy and, and, and all that stuff, uh, but it doesn't shut down anymore. As you can see before, it would just shut down all the time. As you can see now, it doesn't shut down. Something is not right because 
is smoking quite bad. Look at that. So obviously the air is not uh, is not being controlled. So it might be because of that. But it doesn't shut down. So to me, to me, this is showing that the throttle body obviously was restricting the air. That's why the engine would shut down. Um, so uh, it's still not responding to the to the throttle, obviously. But I want to see something here. Let me turn the ignition on. Okay, so we get the car running when we when we remove the throttle body. So the next thing I want to see is my live data. Du -du -du. Where is that going to be now? Monitor operating values? No, maybe. I want to see if my throttle body, uh, my throttle body, if my accelerator pedal position sensor is actually working. Let me press the accelerator. 26. I'm full throttle. And it's showing 33%. It's in there. Let's see if there's any other... Uh, Let's see if there is any other. Forget about that. Okay, so accelerator pedal, accelerator pedal position sensor. When I put full throttle, it should show me as hundred percent, and it goes up to thirty-three percent, and that's it. Okay, so let me. Ooh. It's a little bit of a smell. Um, status. I would like to see a more. Yeah, it's running really bad. Um, Oxygen sensor is not gonna idle. If there's anything for idle, no, there isn't. Okay, so but it looks like we might have a problem with our um, throttle pedal as well. For now, let's kind of inspect the throttle body and see what we can do with it because it looks like we have a problem there as well. Okay, so, I, so I've connected the throttle body again and one of the things I can notice is it might not be in this case because it might be that the 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 butterfly in here, this flap is actually in the rest position but usually you can hear a sort of a, a whistling, winning noise coming from these throttle bodies which is the motor maintaining the position of the, th the, the this flap here is absolutely dead silent so I can't really hear nothing coming from this throttle body right now so it might be that is an issue, but there is a few things we're going to do try to understand what the problem might be. Let me place the phone perhaps here. Uh, hold on a second. Perhaps here. Place it down. Okay, I think it's okay like that. Okay, so... Okay, when I force the throttle body, it doesn't try to bring it back like that. It should force it back and it's not doing it so I don't think I can activate active tests uh, radiator shirt electric fan fuel pump injection systems injection systems no that's injectors okay I've reset the engine is you see if this will do something here but he hasn't done nothing so let me see if I can under let me see if I can somehow maybe under services see if I can somehow try to activate this throttle body okay guys so I couldn't find anywhere where to directly activate the throttle body so what I've done so far is I've reset all the adaptations on the car or learn values and um, clear the entire car through an excuse me through a auto scan. Uh, this is the faults that came back. The throttle body is plugged in. It, this is the faults. Okay. 
so throttle valve faults and accelerator okay so that's my faults they still present and uh, and that's what we have right now so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna try to go through a test plan see if the test plan allows me to actually uh, attempt to activate that uh, valve okay guys and the test plan for some reason unless I'm missing something here so the test plan it forces me to deal with that fault first and and obviously when I try to do it yeah that's fine so it gives me these two options if I press option one engine management interface it tells me this obviously I know that but then it doesn't allow me to go anywhere else so I'm a little bit confused maybe I, I'm not sure um, I could at this point get Ista out of the box and try to do something with it but I think I'm just gonna open that throttle body and see if there's anything that completely backs up my my first thoughts which is a bad throttle body and perhaps a bad um, a bad uh, accelerator pedal but yeah let, let, let's gonna do it let's gonna open that throttle body okay and I still have here the ABS ones from that C3 oh crap okay let's go to open this so I should be able to just pull these little tabs out there we go just like that Should be it, it should come out. Okay, so that's my throttle position sensor. So that's my motor. It's a little bit it's a little bit black around there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 12 volts in there. And see if he runs okay guys so one is there ready let's kind of put the other wire and see if he runs and look at that you see that oh come on take that wire from there and he runs absolutely perfect let me try the opposite way but it shouldn't make a difference There it is, and it runs absolutely fine. So there's nothing wrong with my motor. There's nothing wrong with my motor, which means it's gonna start to trace these back to the ECU most likely. Uh, but before that, let's gonna check the basics, guys. Fuses, blah blah blah, and all that good stuff. Okay, guys. So we removed a little bit of things to get here. And just looking through here, well, I think I know what my problem is going to be. And the camera is not going to be able to capture it, but I will show you in a second. Do I need to say any more, guys? That's the watermark. Look at that. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's no point to lose any, any more time around the car. Uh, all I'm gonna do right now is obviously open the ECU, see how bad it is, if still repairable, or if we need to get another one. Uh, in the meantime, or also, we will be removing obviously all these out to clear out. I showed you in the past on a one on a one series, I think it was uh, same issue. So yeah, that's my problem. Okay, let's gonna open this ECU. Okay, so I haven't done the tabs, but I haven't opened it yet. Are you guys ready? Let's gonna see what we have in here. Ooh, that looks nasty. That looks nasty. That looks really nasty. 
who I usually say once it's cleaned it doesn't look that bad I don't think this is gonna be my case I don't think this is going to be my case but think about it guys the only issues I have is throttle body and accelerator so which means I'm sure this is covers much more than that which means the rest of the CU is not that bad look at that at the top as well so I still think it can be fixable I still think we might be able to do something with it let's open it completely clean it and go from there Uh, another one another thing I want to say guys while I open this is that this the this ECU has two boards and they are connected In these pins down here, but they are not soldered. They are just pressured Inserted so I'm sure there is some poor contacts around here as well <coughs> So yeah, it's gonna need a good cleaning Okay, this is glued around here with this Yeah, okay, it's gonna it's not gonna be that quick Sold a sec. Okay, guys, and here it is. Two boards, as I said. Look at that. It's bad. It's gonna be a lot of work here if, if I'm able to recover this. It's gonna be a lot of work. So let's put our tools away. Let's put our tools away. Get this into the workshop and see what we can do. Okay guys, and we are now here and let's do some work. Uh, so the first thing I'm, I will attempt to do is going to be to separate these two boards, okay? Because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to work on this. Uh, so to separate these boards, I should be able to. Okay, there's no lens here. I should be able just to start to pull these apart, and they should. Yeah, they, should, they come apart, but they're gonna need much more than this than a, a simple spatula. So let me see. Let me see how I'm going to do this. Okay, guys, boards. Separated as you can see, uh, the light is crap in here. Hold on a second. Let me open the door, see if it makes it any better, but probably not. It's corrosion. Oh, sorry, guys, it's corrosion absolutely everywhere. Uh, uh, I, I have smashed a capacitor somewhere in there when taking it on this side. But other than that, well, let's clean everything and go from there. There's a bit of corrosion in there as well, and all these pins. Done any damage on this side of the board, at least from there. Yeah, this side is good. Let's clean these pins properly. The pins are gonna need, they will need filing to remove any sort of really deep corrosion. Clean it to the side. It's not bad this side actually. This one is actually quite good. As you can see, once cleaned, it's not looking too bad. Okay. 
Now, let's clean the other one. I'm gonna put this, this back here. Now this one, I will have to do this a little bit slower, just in case there's any components that are about to come off. Okay, these resistors will have to be changed or at least proper sorted. There's a capacitor here that needs to be replaced. It looks quite nasty. I'll have to check all these passages on the board from this side to the net to the other side. There's a few here that look quite bad. Let me get it fiber pen, it just needs a little bit of that, oh this is nasty, What I will do, this, this area here looks like the, the passages are actually gone. I've gone out to, oh, again to the phone. I'll have to get the multimeter to measure them, but they look bad. Okay. Yeah, this capacitor is completely corroded. The passage to the other side, which is very close to the yeah, that's gonna have to be done. Ooh, it's finished. It still has a little bit if I do it like that. Corrosion. Some corrosion also appear on the pins. Now he has finished. Let me take this out. I should have a spare one back here. Guys, you can skip forward if you guys don't want to be here watching this. It, oh yes, was on the other side that I've smashed in there, right there at the back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that one. There's some corrosion here. Oh, that one's completely gone. That passage, where is that going? Ooh, it looks bad. I'm gonna have to redo that. It looks really bad, that one. It's too much, isn't it? Yeah, there's corrosion everywhere. That's a lot of wires here. Oh gosh. 
And I don't even know, underneath this multiplug, there's an array of... Oh, crap. There's an array of uh, capacitors there. Oh, dear. Gonna have to hope for the best, I guess. Let me wash these outside now. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, guys. And multimeter is here. I'm not gonna bother you with the process of the repair. I've showed you that many times in the past. So we're gonna have to get some wires, carry through these little holes on the board to the other side. Some of these passes, they look really bad. Most likely they are gone. So we're gonna have to do that. Um, I'm not gonna bother with that because otherwise the video is gonna be probably uh, long enough already. So uh, all we're gonna do now is get repaired. Try to see if I don't miss any bit. Uh, because putting the second board in and out is a little bit tricky as you have seen or maybe not but it's a little bit tricky to pull in and out so I want to make sure once I put the two boards together I don't need to take them out again so we're going to do that and then I, just before I assemble the two boards I will show you uh, how what we had to do because I, I don't even know myself unless and until I start to measure the board uh, but yeah we'll go, we're going to go from there and then I'll show you the result so there is a few components in there, not just the capacitors, there's other stuff that's gone on that board in there. There's a Libby, I found this issue here that has where I need, same components. So we're going to use it to take parts and there is a few lanes in there, uh, special um, around this area here. There's a one lane in there that was gone completely, so the part is gone, so we're going to have to just use uh, jumper wires to get this uh, sorted. Uh, there is a little bit of work still to do. I just need you, now you, you stay there. Uh, yeah, we are getting there, hopefully. And I just want to show you this. So that area in there, Looks really nasty. So that's the wire that I have in there just put it through the hole. As you can see I've replaced this because that leg was gone. The pad is gone down there. I just put it under the microscope because I couldn't see where this was going. But obviously you can see there there's a lane that goes straight into that capacitor. Which I replaced already. That was gone already. So all I'm going to do now, that hole goes on the other side. But it's not connected on the other side. However, I don't know if there is a multi-layer. It doesn't look, when I put it um, against the light, it doesn't look that this is a, mul a multi-layer. So I might be lucky on that. Uh, but obviously, because there's nothing to connect on the other side, we're just going to jump this from here to that capacitor in there. Okay. But there is a lot of holes around like that that I might need to get wires through. I haven't measured them all yet. So one bit at a time. So let's kind of jump that. And there he is, a jump mate, if that makes sense. So hopefully you guys are following me. So let's gonna carry on then. Just quick one here. I was trying to look for the pinouts of this ECU. Uh, just over the phone really, not to bother, but is this right? Is this right that this is a... He had an ECU replacement last year. And that he had keys programmed or something like that just two months ago and possibly shall we say that he had oh dear I don't know I want to see how the drain is underneath that uh, white box because if it's still blocked it looks to me that this issue has been replaced but they never cleaned underneath and it's just flooded again seriously it looks like okay guys I kind of finished for now um, and I'm happy. I think I haven't missed anything, but who knows? And um, the only thing I haven't done is remove the multi plug. Um, there is some capacitors underneath lanes and etc. etc. We'll see how it goes, see if it works. I've cleaned properly with alcohol. I got some uh, stuff to clean as much as I could through there with a brush. Tried to get rid of as much stuff as I could. If it's working, we'll then lubricate everything to obviously prevent uh, further corrosion and to prevent any more moisture to uh, stick to it. But for now, I'm quite happy. Let's gonna see what happens. I think this is it. 
moment of the truth so throttle body is back in place as we already kind of established most like there's nothing wrong with it I've cleaned it just before I put it back in and ECU is just there and that's gonna try okay guys and uh, it's running way 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 better now as I'm gonna show you Hold on. But still, still not right. He's not smoking anymore. But still not right. Uh, I still have no response from my throttle. Okay, and believe me or not, I have now some newer codes. Uh, fuel pumps, I still have the throttle. The mass air is disconnected, so no worries about that. Uh, intakes brake vacuum sensors engine oil pressure so it is a little bit of more things around here now so don't know exactly why uh unless and that's my thinking right now unless it's something to do with that second board that when i put it back in maybe it didn't make proper contact everywhere i, I don't know yet i think i'm gonna uh, separate that again play a little bit more with that PCB and see what I can do otherwise it will have to be an ECU replacement we'll see how it goes um, or another thing that can be guys is that is actually a multi-layer ECU it doesn't look like but to be honest with you I can barely see through that board because it's that populated with um, obviously with layers and stuff um, so I can't really see through but if it is a multi-layer and when we cleaned we kind of whatever was in there that maybe was making contact just you know I don't know um, another th situation it can be underneath that multi plug like I said I've cleaned it but I never removed it so I might I might think about remove that as well um, I don't know guys I'm, I'm gonna think about it uh, make a few more checks and um, and see what I'm gonna do guys because at the moment I, I don't know yet okay guys multi plug removed it was a little bit of corrosion around here. I don't know if that would be somehow uh, causing the issue. Just reflowed these capacitors here. Checked everything else. Everything else is good. Uh, this passage here was a little bit corroded. So don't know. I don't know what that pin is. I haven't checked the pin out yet. Not too worried uh, yet about that. But got this one done. Uh, and and that's it all this area now is I'm really happy with it. It's really clean So let's gonna solder the multiplug back on and see what happens uh, And I'm, I'm just gonna go over again what I've done see if I've missed anything But I just don't understand why I have more faults now than I had before which to me doesn't really make any sense, but We'll see how it goes Okay guys and uh, oh dear I'm spending way too long on this. Right, where are we? So I'm back to four faults again. There is more here, but uh, forget about the hair intake temperature because the airflow meter is disconnected and uh, the airflow temperature is, is in the same. So forget about that one and forget about the airflow. So forget about these two because it's disconnected. So I'm down to four faults. So potentiometer on the throttle. Boom. Sorry guys. Uh, so throttle valve, uh, potentiometer 1, potentiometer 2, and throttle valve. So all this is my throttle, yeah? Then here we have a module travel sensor 1 voltage supply. Now at this moment in time guys, we can have two things. We can either have a bad ECU, which was easier to make that judgment by what we have seen. Um, or we can actually have two bad uh, things here um, We can have actually a, a throttle and we can have an accelerator It could be that water when the water got there could have short something and damaged these two parts We don't know It's very difficult to make this call now uh, Well, it's not very difficult. But there, there, there is a few tests I need to do now and um, And I think uh, yeah um, Yeah, there is a few things I'm gonna have to do now uh, let me think okay guys and uh, what was as you might have seen at the start of the video was look like a lovely day just turning to rain 
Oh okay. uh, So uh, I was testing uh, using some diagrams. Uh, I was testing the throttle body. Um, by the way, I've checked all the wiring from the throttle body to this U, which it checks out. And uh, I haven't checked from the from the accelerator yet, but from the throttle body, definitely the six wires they reach the ECU, no problem. Um, and I was checking. Um, a few things in there on the throttle body. I haven't checked power zograms to the throttle body yet, but uh, everything else that I was checking according to those diagrams, they were okay. Uh, I was now coming to check a few things in there um, at, the, the, at the throttle, but obviously it turned to rain, uh, but I will, it just started to rain, but um, I will have a look at that. And I think I'm wasting a little bit of too much time now. Um, I think it's time to get uh, iced out and and actually check things properly uh, because I don't want to call a bad ECU. So this ECU is here, by the way, because obviously it was raining and I had to take it out. I don't want to call a bad ECU in case if there is if the repairs I've done actually fixed the ECU, and um, and all we have now is two bad components. So I need to check everything properly. And uh, just stay tuned guys, uh, we will get there, we will get there. Okay guys, and in there I have the pinouts sort of for my accelerator pedal, which is the first thing I'm going to test. Uh, not for any particular reason, but according to that I should have two grounds. Uh, I should have two 5 volts and then obviously the two signals back to the ECU. So the, 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 the fault that was in there was something to do with signal, 5 volt signal or something like that, or 5 volts power supply to sensor 1 or something like that. So basically, on these 6 pins, I should have 2 times 5 volts. And what you're going to see is, look at that, 2.3 millivolts, so that's nothing. 2.3 millivolts, that's nothing. Okay, 4.99. So there is 1 times 5 volts. Now, let's go there. 2.9 1.3 volts and then 2.7 millivolts so these 1.3 to me should actually be 5 volts okay and I can pretty much guarantee you I can get rid of that fault by just do the following uh, let me show you if I do this oh crap <coughs> If I jump, <clears throat> so was this middle wire and was this last at the bottom? So was that one in there? Test this now. Okay, so there is so accelerator pedal module pedal travel sensor one voltage supply. It says yes. Let's gonna delete these faults now. And let's see if that fault comes back again. Hey okay, guys, and um, yeah, just before we go to the fault, uh, I came to the live data. So that's my accelerator pedal position sensor. And as if you, if you do remember, I have uh, it's changing because the connection at the back on those two probes that I put behind the pedal is not very good. But you can see that it's reading 0, 0.0. Oh, come on! Look, when I press full down, look how quick it's changing, and it goes to 99%. You see that? Okay. Now, look what happens when I disconnect, when I take that jumper off. Okay, so I took it off, as you can see. And look what happens now when I press the, the pedal. Full. 
bingo 33% as he was before can you see that so it doesn't go anymore look full full pedal look all the way down 33% so as you can see when I feed the second sensor with the voltage from the other sensor I actually get a fully working pedal so there is something on the ECU obviously that is not feeding the voltage to here and most likely is the same problem that is not feeding the voltage to the throttle maybe I haven't checked that yet didn't go that far but there's something I want to try just before I do anything else okay guys and what I wanted to show you is uh, when I have the engine running with those with that jumped look at that lovely isn't it oh yeah okay so I think my next step is going to be to check the throttle so here I know already I have a lack of 5 volts I just need to make note which which one is and then try to trace that inside the ECU to see if I can still fix that okay but we are getting progresses it might be that we don't need Is the throttle body now working? That would be fantastic, would it? Well, I think we have a bad ECU. I think it's, it's pointless to to go any further, uh, to go any further, to to be here discussing too much. So, okay. So let me move now into the into the throttle. Okay. So according to that, my pin two and pin six should have five volts. It's gonna check it okay two and six and I have 4.3 volts which is not five volts and I don't even know if this is real voltage okay and now it's actually reading 2.6 so this is, is but when it was reading when it was reading 4.3 volts I put my test light which obviously is a 12 volts but on 5 volts for a couple of seconds it should start to glow and obviously it was not but even if I do it now on 2.6 so look at that 2.6 and as soon as I put load on it it goes down so I believe my 6 is gonna be my ground so let me check that there we go 3 point yeah that's gonna be my ground yeah 4 ohms so 6 is gonna be my ground which means my pin 2 is going to be my voltage. There we go. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm on there. There we go. So 2.6 volts and there. And 2. Point, okay, millivolts. So that's my ground. That's my voltage. My pin 2 is going to be my voltage. There's a diagram in there I could check, but there we go. 2.6 and there. Uh, as soon as I put load, I lose the voltage. Look at that. See? Okay, let's gonna figure it out. Let's go and open the ICU once again and try to see if I find out what's wrong in there. Okay. Okay, guys, next day. Uh, it was a long day yesterday working on this. I've been on it until about 9 o'clock. Um, I've just been watching some of the clips I've done for this uh, because uh, repairs like this, when, when they take too long, I start to kind of start to forget what I said, what I didn't, what I record, what I didn't record. Anyway, so back on the video, I said, um, or I've showed you, uh, that was with the Maxi C's at that time, that after cleaning and all that stuff, we are down to four faults, yeah? Three faults for the... For the throttle and one volt for the pedal uh, sensor one voltage supply something like that uh, then uh, after that I've showed you that if I would put uh, if I would uh, take the five volts from sensor two into sensor one my pedal would work uh, fine on live data now after, uh, like I said, until 9 o'clock last night, after being back and forwards, um, measuring this board and powered the board on a bench, tried to figure out uh, why I didn't have the 5 volts in there. 
what I figured out is, guys, that the actually 5 volt supply that feeds the sensor one in there on the accelerator pedal is the same 5 volts that feeds the throttle. So, if I could get 5 volts on that circuit, I would, uh, I would have both, both volts fixed. Uh, and guess what? I think I did. Okay, so right now, I'm down to four, to one volt on my engine ECU. My uh, uh, my uh, ABS light kind of has gone away now because uh, all the other faults are gone on the ECU. Uh, I'm down to one fault, um, and um, but to get that to 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 work, I figured out that this little purple jumper did the trick. Okay, that's all I need. I needed to uh, to get that sorted. And what I'm going to show you now. Uh, laptop is just putting what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you that the car starts fine idles fine and revs absolutely fine That's working. Okay. Now I had to take this here because I didn't want to leave it in there because it was raining yesterday But you're going to see that it revs absolutely fine. It comes up with an engine light though uh, And uh, I will show you why the fault is in there, which I'm a little bit even more confused now because I don't understand why I have this fault But I'll show you in a second uh, What I mean by that? Okay, so my data is all, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm sorry about the glare, maybe like that. As you can see, I have one module with faults, and I hope before I, okay, let, 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 let me show you the fault. Okay, so it comes up with these two faults, okay? Sometimes it comes up with the uh, potentiometer 2, sometimes it comes up with potentiometer 1. Uh, it says existent no because I haven't started the engine yet as soon as I start the engine that will become present Okay, and I believe the mixture control is something to do with this as well perhaps Okay, so but what I want to show you now And I'm lost now uh, function structure No, it's not there uh, it's There oh, no, it's vehicle information Okay but what I wanted to show you just before we go any forward, so I'm down to that one fault Is I want to show you That uh, with that jumper in place, obviously um, Now the circuit is sending, is closed and is sending 5 volts to my pedal And 5 volts to my throttle body So I'll show you in a second When I come to there Oh by the way As I said earlier, this ECU has been replaced, look in there has been replaced last year just about eight months ago and I bear with you whoever replaced this he never cleaned the drain so he just flooded this you again oh dear okay so uh, that is operating values accelerator pedal read state zero percent okay now when I press down as you can see there's no jumpers in there right now okay so the, the pedal is just plugged in normal Okay, and uh, as you can see now, uh, full throttle. Okay, look how quick it responds. Okay, so pedal checked out. Okay, there's no faults per pedal. And now I, I'm, I will be doing something here. If I remember how that's done. Uh, control unit. Uh, where is that? It's here, I think. Mm, repair and maintenance. I oh, know it's service functions, I think. So, powertrain. Now he's not here. What the heck is that? Powertrain. supply perhaps third of valve I think is that maybe uh I think is that am I not mistaken <coughs> K 
Okay, so functional description. Okay, so potentiometer two, section fault. So he's going to go for uh, for potentiometer two. Yeah, I, uh, it depends. Sometimes it gives you different stuff. It depends on the fault. But let me check uh, outside permissible voltage range. Okay, let's gonna go next. I, I want to see if it takes me to. Now nah, that's good. Is the voltage too low when the fault code was stored? Under voltage, under voltage. Let me see if I can get to the place where he allows me to. Okay, let's do continue. Let me see if he's there. That's going to. Yeah, there he is. So, function test for the electro material throttle actuator. Let's press next. Yes. Okay, so what, what, what he's going to do next is. is he gonna be, he's going to come up with a fault for, uh, for communication, but that doesn't really matter. So, between 0 and 90. And the sum of the voltage of all effect sensors should be 4.8 volts. So right now is like that. Set point is 5 volts. And what 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 he's going to do now is going to open and close the throttle. Okay, so look at look at the top. And look at the sum of the voltage down there. And I can guarantee you it is opening and closing the throttle. I could place the phone in there. But it is opening and closing, okay? Can you see that? And the truth is, the voltage never moves from 4.8, as you can see below. It never moves. So both sensors change their voltage. So one increases the voltage, the other one decreases the voltage. But the voltage never comes out from 4.8. Okay. So I don't understand why he's triggering a fault for the throttle body. Uh, as you can see from the readings, the ECU is reading. So everything on ECU seems to be okay. Otherwise, one of the readings would, would not be there. Um... Unless it's something that when the, 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 the engine is running is somehow mess things up, perhaps. But um, I, I just don't know. Right now I'm a little bit confused if I have a bad throttle body um, or if I have still something wrong on the ECU. I don't think the 0 0.2 volts difference, it should say 5 volts, if that is actually making a big difference, I don't think it would do. I don't think it would do. I don't think it's going to be 0 0.2 volt. I don't know what's the tolerance. Because right here on the side, it doesn't really tell you. If there's any tolerance in here. It doesn't really say nothing. So I'm not sure what the ECU is going to be allowing to get out of the those readings. And for our long, so it doesn't really say it's nothing. So, right now, I'm a little bit confused. I don't really know what to do next. If, um, oh, I just don't know what to do. I really just don't know what to do next. Okay, and in the meantime, I will start the engine to show you the engine runs fine. Okay, it comes up with our fault straight away and it fluctuates, revs a little bit at the start. I think it's because of that throttle body thing, but it stabilized straight away. It's the first time I'm starting the engine today, by the way. Okay, so the engine runs, I would say, pretty much fairly. Fairly okay, I'll show you. So I don't really see nothing 
it's not too bad. And as you're gonna see, my throttle actually responds okay. There we go. So I don't know what to call it now. I don't know if, I mean, if, if, if those readings in there, when we did it, if anything would, I don't think it's gonna be that 0 0.2 volts that's gonna make a difference. Uh, so I don't know. I'm really confused right now. And uh, if I would have a throttle body to try just to rule out and then call the ECU, I tell you what, I'm not gonna to touch the ECU again. If, if it's not a throttle body, I would love to replace the ECU because I've wasted all day yesterday pretty much uh, around the ECU. So, uh, see, the car runs fine as soon. Look at that. Running fine. Don't know why it's triggering this fault. I really don't. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, what do you guys think? Do you think this is gonna solve my problem now? With a 5 volt reading? If it does, I will show you what I've done. If it doesn't, well, you don't need to know everything. So, let's terminate this uh, test. Yes, it's been reached. So, what I've done, guys, I forced 5 volts into there, in a different way, into that circuit. Um, and also, let me come here to fault, uh, memory fault, delete fault, yes. Okay, and what I've done is, I put the actually scope in there, and um, there is point where the sum of the two voltage actually drops down to 4.7. So was at that point that I thought, okay, is that because it's going too low? Whether the engine uh, off was 4.8 as you have seen earlier, and I thought 0.2 volts won't be much of a difference, but with the engine running, that voltage for some reason, maybe because of the load, I don't know, uh, it drops down to sometimes to uh, 4.7, and I thought, okay, maybe that's my problem. So, I just thought, let me find how to put actually 12 volts, how to put 12 volts in there. Let's do another vehicle test, make sure all the volts are gone. And it's coming up kind of good. So DME has no faults, but it didn't have any faults with the engine off. It was only when I started the engine that the fault would come up. Okay, and looks like the, the car is absolutely fault free right now, as you can see. Okay, let's start the engine, cycle the ignition again, start the engine, and see what happens. See if that makes any difference. Whoa, look at that! And actually did make a difference. My fault is gone. I can't believe this. There is a fault on there because, uh, let me show you this. Oh dear. Sometimes smoke's really bad, really, really bad. Look at that. It's like if it's burning oil or some something like that. But it was not always doing it before, so let me see what faults we are getting now. I hope what I've done to sort this problem is not now causing other issues. Uh, let me select that and see what faults we have in there. Nah. Okay, 
Hold on a second. Oh dear. Oh dear. Problem solved! <laughs> okay, look at that. And no smoke. Look at that. Smoke is gone. Oh dear, can't believe. Let's just confirm. Only thing you need to do now is because earlier, I don't think I ever showed you that, is that uh, uh, what I want was that earlier, guys. I have it's there. I keep getting messed up with this. Was that earlier, guys? I have. Um, Uh, what I was about to say, oh no, I forgot, oh yeah, because uh, earlier I've deleted all the adaptations and I think the car is just learning the adaptations again, so when it comes from high revs to throttle to idling, it kind of tends to lose it a little bit, you see, you might haven't seen it, but I'm just going to show you while it scans, I'm going to show you that it's running absolutely fine, I'm going to show you the engine idling. Absolutely perfect. You're gonna see there is no smoke pretty much other than what a normal car will do. And let's clear the faults now that we had. So let's clear that. That display fault memories. So everything is gone, this faults. As you can see, so let's. Uh, this video, guys, I bear with you, is about an hour long by now. I, I doubt you guys, many of you, have actually reached here. Okay, delete the faults. Let it scan again. And uh, some of you are already probably wondering, yeah, hold on a second, but what have you done? What have you done? And why was this so... When I put... When I've done what I've done to get the throttle problem away, the reading to the 5 volts, um, the, I did a mistake in there. Um, I didn't measure it. Uh, I was just doing it by looking at the PCB and I messed up completely. Uh, luckily, luckily I haven't done, so let's turn the ignition back on and scan the car again. Unfortunately my cable doesn't detect uh, ignition cycling so, so I need to do it like this, okay. Um, luckily I didn't put like a ground into there but, but I, I wouldn't do that but I, I missed something there, I should have measured it and I didn't. So. But now, and obviously that what I've done last time to fix the throttle, um, it was actually causing all that smoke, it was causing the car to misfiring, because I plugged that in the wrong place, um, or I soldered that in the wrong place. But now I rectified the problem, and as you've seen, there is no fault right now. So, as you can see, all green. Now let's start the engine. Let's cycle the ignition. There we go, idling absolutely fine. No faults. Let's give you a few revs. Good. Let's scan the car again. And make sure there is no faults. And we should be ready to go and close the ECU. And when I do close this you, I will show you. There we go, you see, flashed, it's scanned already, there is no faults. The car is absolutely fault free right now. And I'm so happy we managed to fix this ECU. So it was the ECU in the end, guys. Uh, there is, no faults. So, 
now we're going to turn this off and remove this U, take this U back and get it closed. And I think I'm going to wrap up the video in there once I show you what I've done. Uh, and I think that's it really. Let's go to do it then. Okay, the moment to reveal what I've done. Nothing that a jump wire can resolve. <laughs> Okay guys, so basically that uh, little wire that was there before, okay, um, was only having uh, 4.9 volt, 4.8 volts as you've seen, and then with the car running, sometimes on the scope that would drop to 4.7. So what I've done is I found another point where there is actually proper 5 volts, and there we go. Problem resolved. So, uh, right now, guys, I'm going to clean the cover, close the ECU, uh, remove that white box, uh, that, uh, remove that white box, and clear the drain. The drain most likely is going to be blocked. Close the ECU, put everything back on. But that's it for this video. I'm really happy that we managed to... Uh, obviously, I'll go for a drive with the car, make sure it drives okay. Uh, if it doesn't drive okay, then I will let you know, but I I don't see why not. It revs okay, it, it, it's absolutely fine. And uh, I think we got it fixed, guys. I really think we got it fixed. So, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, what else? I really hope you have lasted this long. I don't know how long the video is going to be. I really hope you last this long. If you have... I hope that some information here somehow makes sense and you guys are going to... I'm gonna enjoy it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, any comments, put them below. And like always, guys, thanks so much for watching.